Happy to have you back, football fans. Welcome to Goal Side. Real Madrid's Casemiro is nowadays known for his uncompromised approach on the pitch, leading him to become one of the world's best defensive midfielders. The Brazilian talent won everything with Real Madrid and his home country, Spanish Super Cup, Club World Cup, Copa America, Champions League four times, and La Liga. He was an integral part of his teams throughout all of these quests. The question begs, how did he achieve all of that? To answer this question, we have to go way back. The young Casemiro grew up in Sao Paulo. It's interesting that his real name isn't Casemiro, it's Casimiro, but we'll explain that one later on. However, he joined the club wearing the same number as the city early on, FC Sao Paulo. In the earliest days, young Casemiro showed his wits and smarts. When he arrived to Sao Paulo for a trial, there were around 300 kids there and the club only accepted 50. He told the story of how he realized that the competition for his forward spot was pretty intense, deciding to play instead as a defensive midfielder. I remember that the coach asked me who was a goalkeeper and then three people raised their hand and then he asked who was a forward and 50 people raised their hand. So I kept my hand down. There was a lot of competition. He then asked who was a number 10 and there were another 50 with their hands up. The coaches insisted that I was built to be a forward, but I insisted that no, that I was a defensive midfielder and that's how it all started. Due to the early signs of his determination, will, and leadership, Casemiro was made captain at just 11 and held the captaincy throughout all of the younger categories. The captain also made Brazil's under-17 team for the World Cup in 2009. Many interesting names played alongside Casemiro. Alison Becker, who is now considered one of the best goalkeepers in the world, was between the posts. The team was star-studded, to say the least. Neymar and Coutinho led the front as the two valuable talents already showed signs of world-class players they were about to become. However, the team failed miserably. Dropping out in the group stage with a defeat to Switzerland really hit the youngsters hard as the confidence was rock bottom in the Brazilian football. Still, Casemiro would later show his relentlessness and determination to rise to the challenge. He joined Brazil's under-20 team in 2011 for the team to win the title with Casemiro as one of the crucial players in the squad. The defensive midfielder showed his braveness, taking the responsibility to shoot the first penalty in the quarterfinals against Spain, where the Carioca went through. Even though Casemiro himself didn't play a lot in Sao Paulo, Real Madrid spotted his talent. After playing 62 matches for the Brazilian club, Los Blancos reacted promptly, securing the signing of the Brazilian talent and assigning him to the B team in the beginning. However, Casemiro didn't stay there for long, impressing the managers and coaches. Casemiro earned an opportunity in La Liga match for the senior side just a couple of months after joining the B team. Despite a solid start in Madrid, Los Blancos wanted Casemiro to develop with more playing time than they could provide him with. Thus, he joined Porto on loan in the summer of 2014. When Casemiro returned from his very successful loan spell in Portugal, even scoring four goals, he found Rafael Benitez at the helm of Real Madrid, and the players weren't really in favor of the Spanish manager, none more so than Casemiro himself, given that he received very little playing time under Benitez. However, everything changed for Casemiro when Zinedine Zidane stepped through the door. The French manager joined in the middle of the 2015-16 season. Things weren't looking too good for Real Madrid as they were trailing behind the mighty Barcelona side with Messi, Neymar, and Suarez tried in demolishing everything in their paths. Just when things looked lost, Zidane found the solution. He slotted Casemiro as the defensive midfielder spot, ordering him to clean up everything behind Modric and Cruz, doing what he does best, breaking up the opposition attacks, as Casemiro himself explained. My best skill is the way I go after every ball. I don't care if it's the second minute or if it's the 90th. I always go after it as if it were the last ball. Things went perfectly after the change. The trio of Casemiro, Modric, and Cruz would go on to become legendary as they played a crucial role in Real Madrid winning the Champions League three times in a row. Casemiro's role was particularly interesting. Even though scoring goals was far from his main duty, he managed to hit a stunning shot past Buffon when Real Madrid beat Juventus 4-1 in the Champions League final. However, where he really shone was constantly tackling the opposition in the right spots. He's also notorious for avoiding red cards, as he knows just the measure to get under the opponent's skin, provoking him and getting the reaction without reacting himself and leaving the team dry. The Brazilian Mauro Silva, the legend of Deportivo La Coruna, explained it the best. I love Casemiro. He's a soft spot of mine. He does everything well. He places himself in front of the team's defense and gives calmness to the whole team. He always moves intelligently, distributes well, and has added goals to his repertoire. He always knows what his team needs at all times. For me, he's the best in the world in his position. Praise for Casemiro is coming from all sides. Even though some Madrid fans disregard his skills due to the lack of technical ability that his teammates have, the fact that Zinedine Zidane himself cannot imagine the team without Casemiro speaks volumes about the defensive midfielder. When he debuted for Sao Paulo back in Brazil, the kit staff typed his name wrongly. So he played with Casemiro written on his back with an E, unlike his real name, Casemiro written with an I. The Brazilian put in a great performance, causing him to wear Casemiro with an E on his back for the rest of his career, putting his real name aside. With all the praise about him, a question pops up. How does Casemiro compare with the other world-class defensive midfielders of this era? 
Well, it's a complicated question for many reasons. First and most important is that not all defensive midfielders have the same skill set, and each one has their team playing differently. For example, Barcelona's Sergio Busquets fits in perfectly with the Catalans due to his technical superiority, which makes up for his lack of speed. Chelsea's N'Golo Kante is a much more versatile defensive midfielder capable of covering the ground like no other in this era. Kante has a very low center of gravity, allowing him to control the ball in tight spaces, despite lacking the technicality of Busquets and such. In the middle of it all, there's Casemiro. Rarely do defensive midfielders score at the Brazilian's rate. Since the beginning of the 2016-17 season, Casemiro managed to score in every single season both in UEFA Champions League and La Liga for the Los Blancos. This is a pretty rare find and one worthy of admiration when you realize that Busquets scored twice in the last five seasons or that Conte never scored in any European competition. Casemiro is the perfect mixture as his 185 centimeters of height allow him to compete for aerial duels all over the pitch against the opponent's strongest players. But it also doesn't take away anything from his mobility, enabling him to protect any part of defense, whether it's Carvajal, Marcelo, or even Sergio Ramos searching forward. In fact, Casemiro often draws comparisons from the media with a legendary defensive midfielder who was a symbol for shielding the defense correctly, Claude Makalele. The legendary Frenchman enjoyed an amazing spell at Real Madrid, winning both the Champions League and La Liga trophy with the Galactico squad, which included Zinedine Zidane. However, Florentino Perez sold him in order to accommodate the new Galactico signing, David Beckham. The move backfired big time, as that Madrid side never reached its previous heights as it did with Makele. Many argue that that's exactly the experience that burnt Zidane, and now he finds Casemiro as his most valuable asset on the team, putting him above all others and making him almost irreplaceable on the squad. Another important aspect of Casemiro's playing style is tackling. Breaking up attacks is one of his main duties, but it's underrated how the Brazilian is able to constantly break up the plays, tackle the best dribbles, and provoke the opponent without seeing a red card. While we're at it, here's a shocking stat regarding Casemiro. He only received one red card in his entire career. He's become the symbol of a defensive midfielder so much that even his teammate Tony Cruz used him as a reference point on one occasion when Julian Loptegui played the German at the defensive midfielder. I like playing deeper, but I'm not Casemiro. All of this lauding about Casemiro's motivation and goals in his footballing career, but where does it all come from? Just like many Brazilians, the young Casemiro grew up in poverty and a tough life. Having been the oldest of three kids, life was all but easy for him, more so due to the fact that their father left the family when Casemiro was just five years of age. Casemiro's mother and his father had a big fight, resulting in Casemiro's dad leaving the family forever. His father hasn't shown up to this day, showing just how big of a person he is. Casemiro once claimed he doesn't hold any grudges against his dad. If I see him on the street today, I won't recognize him. He had a serious fight with my mom when I was five and left the family for my mom to manage. I've wanted to meet him because I have no grudge against him. It was what God wanted for me. That's why I have always left it just the way it is. Just as you'd expect, he holds his closest family to the highest regards, as he himself once said. My mother was always with me. She always supported me, and thanks to God, I can help my family. I'm happy I had her by my side when I needed it most. Rising from poverty to greatness, Casemiro is a success story like no other. You wouldn't even notice him at first if you watched a Real Madrid match. Often moving in the shadows, avoiding the spotlight, Casemiro is brilliant in what he does. For all his tackling and ugly plays, Real Madrid couldn't function without a boy who became a defensive midfielder just because the competition was too hard for his preferred striker position. Zinedine Zidane is back at Real Madrid once again. This season, Madrid looks ready to conquer La Liga and the Champions League once again. Cristiano Ronaldo left, Lukaku Modric is aging, and Sergio Ramos is often criticized by the fans. A lot of things have changed over the years, as even the lauded Keylor Navas left the team to join PSG. Barcelona won the league in a consecutive succession, which hurt Madrid fans to no end. However, one man stands in the midfield, ready to kill for his teammates. Everything in order to win and lead Los Blancos to the glory in all competitions, no matter the circumstances. This is what led him to win the Under-20 World Cup with Brazil, Copa America, La Liga, Champions League, and numerous other trophies with club and country. And nobody can doubt that he will achieve a lot more by the time he's done. Because that's just Casemiro.